All right, you guys, let's talk about slope. Uh, I in general, I think you guys are going to find this stuff relatively easy, mainly because this did get beat in your head in high school. The whole rise over run or change in y over change in x. All right, first we need to talk about what is a linear function. A function f is going to be a linear function uh, if it's in the form y equals mx plus b. All right, again, you guys are reading f of x, and I said y, but please bear in mind from last week's lecture that y and f of x are exactly the same thing. All right, and again, this whole mx plus b thing should sound really familiar from high school. m is our slope, b is going to be our y-intercept. All right, so do we have to use the letters m and b? I mean, could I have said y equals ax plus c? Sure. M and B, I'm just using them because I've learned that that's what you guys are most comfortable with uh, because that's what you tend to remember from high school uh, where slope is referred to as the letter M and the y-intercept is referred to as the letter B. But never, ever, ever memorize letters in algebra because I could use any letters I want there. All right, when it comes to slope, the best way to think about slope is going to be uh, the numerical measure of the steepness of a line. Uh, we just don't use the word slope in our everyday language. Uh, some of you have heard me joke that you don't drive up Highway 26 to uh, Asheville going, whew, this slope is pretty steep. Um, you know, we just tend to, to say that it, the incline is steep or uh, the highway is steep. We typically don't use the word slope in our everyday language. Uh, but again, anytime we talk about the hills, uh, whether we're running or cycling or walking or driving, we're just talking about slope. Uh, slope uh, also is geometrically interpreted as the ratio of rise to over run. Uh, this, again, is something you guys remember, uh, rise being the change in y and run being the change in x. Okay, and so you'll hear me refer to the rise over run a little bit uh, when we start graphing. All right, so again, the change in the horizontal distance all right, so this is the difference between x2 and x1, is often denoted as what looks like triangle x. Uh, this is the Greek letter delta and is read change of x. So again, that triangle x is really delta x and means change of x. Those of you going on into business calculus will certainly see these uh, delta x's a lot. All right, the change in the vertical distance, that's just the, the rise, that's the change in the y's, y2 minus y1, and it's also denoted as delta y or change in y. All right, and the slope m of the line through two separate points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, again, it's just going to be the change in the y over the change in the x. All right, and so here I have um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, bear in mind, I could have also done y1 minus y2 all over x1 minus x2. The key here, guys, is that if I choose y1 first in my numerator, then I have to choose x1 first in my denominator. Okay, so notice that these subscripts line up, all right, and that's the only rule that we have to follow. All right, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I just want to present this information right now, and we'll revisit it later uh, in the lecture material in uh, horizontal and vertical lines. But a, the slope of a vertical line is undefined. All right, this is the straight line that runs north and south. Uh, again, the slope is undefined. And the slope of a horizontal line is zero. So a line that runs east to west or west to east, uh, that slope is going to be zero. All right, finding slope with the slope formula. All right, so let's just find the slope of the line through negative 4, 7, and 2, negative 5. All right, so for those of you who haven't worked with slope in a while, what I recommend doing is listing your x1, y1, x2, and y2. And that way, when you write down your formula, it literally becomes that plug and chug math. And so once I know my y2 is negative 5 and my y1 is 7, I can write in the numerator negative 5 minus 7. And similarly, in the denominator, I can do 2 minus negative 4. All right, I combine my terms in the numerator and denominator and simplify to get negative 2 as my slope. All right, so 
what exactly is this saying? Um, we don't really know the context of the problem, so here we just have two points. Uh, but we could say that y is going down 2 for every time x goes to the right one. So for every one increase in x, y goes down 2. All right, let's uh, try two more points. Now we have the points 2, 7 and 2, negative 4. All right, again, I denote my x1, y1, x2, y2. I uh, plug and chug math here, so I plug in negative 4 minus 7, and then the 2 minus 2 in my denominator, and hmm, I have a, have a little bit of a problem here. All right, I just want to review this for you guys because often you get confused as to what 0 in the denominator means versus 0 in the numerator. This is a 0 in the denominator, which we cannot do. Okay, we cannot divide by 0. That means this negative 11 over 0 is undefined, and because it is undefined, that tells me we have a vertical line, a line running north-south. All right, let's find the slope of the line through 5, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2. All right, again, I denote my x1, my y1, my x2, and my y2. I am going to plug those into my formula to get negative 2 minus negative 2, and 5 minus negative 1, and now I have 0 over 6. All right, so what is 0 over 6? Is that 0? Is that 6? Is that undefined? That is 0 parts of 6. So imagine if you have a pizza cut into 6 slices. You eat 0 slices. So how much did you eat? Well, hopefully you just rolled your eyes uh, and thought, well, duh, I ate none, uh, because that's what that fraction says. 0 over 6 is just 0. Okay, and so since uh, the slope here is zero, that tells us we have a horizontal line or a line running west to east. All right, let's graph the line passing through the point negative one, five and having slope negative five, three. All right, so now what I wanna do is just kind of talk about how we use the slope. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find this point negative one, five on my graph all right, and so you can see I find this point negative 1, 5 on my graph, and I'm going to use the slope uh, negative 5 thirds to get my other point. All right, and so I go down 5. I'm not sure quite why that got moved over. I go down 5 and write 3. So let's actually go back here, and I'm going to do this properly with my pen here. I'm going to go down 5. I'm going to go down 5 and right 3. Okay, so again, what does negative 5 thirds mean? It means down 5, right 3. It could also mean left 3, up 5, but I don't really have that point on my, on my graph here. All right, let's talk a little bit about average rate of change. Guys, average rate of change is just a synonym for slope. All right, it means the exact same thing. In fact, those of you going on to business calculus uh, or calculus 122 or regular calculus 141, this is forever and always how you end up thinking about slope. Uh, you never go forward thinking about um, rise over run, but rather the average rate of change. In fact, calculus as a word just means the rate of change of functions. Okay, so we know that the slope of a line is the ratio of the vertical change in y to the horizontal change in x. Okay, the slope gives the rate of change in y per unit of change in x. Again, these two bullets say the exact same thing. All right, which is just the more English mathy version of rise over run. All right, just meaning that we have some change in y over some change in x. All right, but instead of just thinking about it in terms of you know having two points x1 y1 and x2 y2, uh, a linear function can be defined on some interval. Okay, and we can talk about the average rate of change on this interval by just the change in the function divided by the change in the x. All right, so here these are on our x axis, all right, because it's the interval that we're on. And so I get that difference. 
And in the numerator, these are y values. Remember, f of x is the same thing as y. And so I just plug my x's into my function and get my change in y. Okay, there's no difference in this formula than that rise over run formula that we've already talked about. Okay, have you guys used this already this semester? Absolutely. Remember Amazing Race week four? All right, you plotted population data, then you added a trend line, and your slope was just the average rate of change in the population every 10 years. Uh, you guys have either created avatars or glogs talking about this. All right, and uh, thanks to Team Tar Heels for letting me, uh, actually they didn't let me, I stole it off their glog, uh, but I'm using uh, some of their data here uh, to show where you guys have done this. All right, you plotted this crazy data and you put a trend line on it and you got this equation and you talked about the change in the population for every 10 years. All right, so here for the city that uh, Team Tar Heels used, all right, the population on average went up 49,875 every decade. All right, let's do a word problem. Interpreting slope as average rate of change. In 2001, sales of DVD players numbered 12.7 million. In 2006, estimated sales of DVD players were 19.8 million find the average rate of change in DVD players in millions per year. All right, so we have a change of X and we know we need a change in Y. The question is what's X and what's Y? All right, there's a trick. Be happy that you're listening to me tell this instead of just reading the notes or better yet, not doing either. All right, you everybody sees this right here, per year. Okay, that always reads per whatever is our, our X. All right, so here, year is our X. All right, so for X 2001, I get a Y of 12.7 million. For an X of 2006, I get a Y of 19.8. Can you find the slope? Well, I certainly hope so. All right, so now we have two points all right, 2001, 12.7, 2006, 19.8. And I do my change in DVDs divided by my change in years, and I get 1.42. What the heck does this mean? It means the sales of DVD players increased by an average of 1.42 million each year from 2001 to 2006. Does that mean for sure, without a doubt, absolute truth, that every single year it went, the DVD player, players went up 1.42 million? No, it means on average over these five years, sales of DVD players went up 1.42 million each year.